flight. It's possibly mankind's greatest achievement. It's allowed us to follow our dreams and show the birds who's boss. But even 35,000 feet up in the air, we're still human. When you've got to go, you've got to go. And once you've been and you press that flush button and you get that whooshing rush of suction, the same question pops into everyone's mind, right? If I press that button while I was sat on the throne, is it strong enough to suck my insides straight out of my body? Well, you need wonder no more, people. BritLab is here for you. First up, I'll look at how do aeroplane toilets work? What do they actually do with my waist? And then the whole insides being sucked out of the body issue. Aeroplane toilets actually have an impressive, long and kind of disgusting history. Early bucket and bottle systems gave way to more advanced but still pretty horrible solutions. By the 1920s and 30s, some inbuilt toilets were connected to the outside world. You could literally lift a flap and be staring straight at the ground below. One RAF plane, the submarine Stran Ra, was even nicknamed the Whistling Sh House because of the noise of the air rushing past the toilet pan. That's not a whistle you'd want to hear high above your head. By the late 1930s, the Boeing 314 introduced flush toilets to commercial customers. Additional luxuries on the flying boat included a lounge, dressing rooms, and a bridal suite. Flush toilets, often filled with that familiar blue chemical toilet liquid, continued to be used for decades. The first of the familiar sucking vacuum toilets was installed as late as 1982. These toilets use a pressure differential to suck your waste from the toilet. Well, no, for physics purists, technically they use the air pressure in the cabin to push the waste down the toilet, but let's not go there. A vacuum toilet is popular since it uses hardly any water. Water is heavy, so carrying less water saves money on fuel. They're also less smelly. The force of that pressure differential moves your matter down to a separate holding tank at the far end of the plane. Unlike the old flush toilets, which emptied straight into a tank directly underneath you, which would then stink like a portaloo after a festival trapped in a tin can in the sky. Nice. And the waste? Well, for everyone who enjoys being outside, you'll be pleased to know that they don't just drop it out right underneath the flight path and hope for the best. Back in the old blue flushing liquid days, they didn't either, but the tanks were prone to leaking. When that happened, the water, and everything else with it, would freeze to the side of the plane. It would defrost and drop when the plane came down to land. These semi-frozen blue ice missiles have been reported to have been dropped on homes, cars, and even people sunbathing in their garden. Vacuum toilets are much less likely to leak though, so you probably don't have to be worried. Right, back to the big question. Could a modern day flush pull your insides right out of you? It's a terrifying thought, so I've had a good dig into this, but I've not been able to find any verified reports of anything like it happening on a plane. The worst injury I could find was a case study from 1994 when a woman received a nasty injury whilst using a vacuum toilet down here on terra firma. She'd pulled up the seat and perched on the rim, which might have meant it could have made her a, a stronger seal. She lost some blood and needed to go to the hospital, but was okay in the end. And she certainly didn't lose any intestines. The paper does, terrifyingly, also mention a woman on a cruise ship who was partially eviscerated, disemboweled, by its vacuum toilet. But hey, at least it's not on a plane. If you do want to be worried about something, then there is actually something lurking in the airplane bathroom that is potentially much more dangerous. It's the water in the sink. Back in 2002, the Wall Street Journal found that water from taps in the toilets had levels of contamination which were tens, sometimes hundreds of times above US government limits. Airlines have tried to clean up their act since then, but as recently as 2013, the Environmental Protection Agency still weren't convinced the airlines were doing enough to keep that tap water safe. Maybe take some bottled water next time you fly? Hmm. Oh, and here at BritLab, we love to spread the science love. So now you know how toilets work on planes, why not head over to D News, where Amy explains how Wi-Fi on planes work. Let them know that we sent you and give them a sub if you like what they do, it's only fair. As always, leave your comments below and subscribe to BritLab for answers to those big science questions every week. Probably the most famous ejector seat in film history. And apparently it really worked. Well, in one car,